with us today is uh, Michal Rasas of Rashov, Slovakia. He will talk about his experiences working with uh, Ukrainian refugees arriving in, in Slovakia and uh, their uh, welcoming into the, the Slovak uh, community. Here now is Michal. Thank you very much uh, and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, CGSI, and my friends Marek Dilon and Jerry Martinek for inviting me. So thank you, guys. Well, our today's topic will be a little bit uh, unusual and it's going to reflect present situation in the world as well. Well, most of us that has at least some genealogy awareness and uh, experience would probably agree with me that present is some kind of bridge between the past and the future. And uh, we are often amazed uh, what kind of uh, difficulties and uh, obstacles and hard times our ancestors had to go through. And uh, maybe we were living in some kind of a dream uh, that we can enjoy the gift of peace and all these big dramas uh, are already behind us and we are not going to be exposed to these difficult situations anymore. Well, 24th February 2022, unfortunately, uh, destroyed this illusion that, that we were living in and unfortunately brought on the table completely new topic that we did not expect it's going to come again unfortunately that's the that's the war and uh, uh, it's bringing the killing of the people in the most cruel way and uh, right now it's maybe our turn how we are going to deal with this unexpected but still very tragic situation and uh, we maybe we'll be judged by our our children or grandchildren how how we could deal with it and how can we uh manage that i don't think it's uh, correct to stand behind and uh, to put the head the head into the sand uh and uh, this is something that we probably need to really take as a new new reality well we can already see some of the consequences of this uh, uh, aggression. Number one, and that's probably very surprising, that Ukraine did not uh, fall uh, after three days as Mr. Putin expected, but it's still standing. It is defending not just their own people, but uh, also the whole Europe, because he wouldn't stop uh, on the border. And also he is, uh, Ukraine is defending the values of the Western world where the human life has the has the value, not like in the tyranny. Well, another another big and very visible uh, result is the huge and uh, probably unprecedented wave of the immigrants, especially mothers with their children are escaping Ukraine. And uh, right now, I believe it is some six million people that already left. Through Slovakian border, it was uh, some uh, 360, 70,000 people, maybe 70,000 people are staying here in Slovakia. Uh, just to give you a little comparison, Slovakia has 5.4, 5.5 million people. So the number of the people that emigrated from Ukraine is, this, is even bigger than we have in Slovakia. So these numbers are really shocking. Well, uh, also, uh, please let me be a little bit personal right now. When all this started, uh, maybe just many of you guys, I also was shocked. I was paralyzed and I just uh, could not believe that this is actually really happening. Uh, that 21st century, when we are living in the globalized world, where we are relying on the global economy, uh, sharing technologies and kind of we have other stuff to do, like uh, climate and, and overpopulation. Somebody will have such a stupid idea. Excuse me, but this was a really most stupid idea in the history of stupidity to, to attack. That this actually we will have to deal. Anyway, uh, I was also uh, put into the situation that uh, I can be paralyzed like a little mouse in front of the snake. 
uh, and just do nothing, or we can try to do something and we can we can actually help these people that were starting to crossing Slovakian border in thousands, in ten thousands. Uh, in February it was still freezing and suddenly overnight we had uh, thousands of people in Prešov and Košice. Uh, I live in Prešov, Slovakia, which is about 100 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. And there, are, there were people pouring into Slovakia. So I, I actually realized that uh, we need to do something. And uh, if we can do at least a little thing, that, that would be great. If we can uh, help even one person, that, that still counts. And the thing is also created uh, by the little drops. So uh, this was maybe my, my personal uh, opinion. But uh, another, another result that this tragedy brought, uh, and probably the only positive, was incredible and huge wave of solidarity, empathy, and, and unity. And uh, I have to say that I was very much moved by many of my American friends, no matter if they were Slovak, Czech, or other heritage. But uh, immediately I started to got offers that uh, they would like to help, that would like to, to contribute somehow, in spite they are thousands miles away, and theoretically it doesn't really affect them immediately. But still, many of you guys uh, really offered the help. And uh, I just would like to really say a big thank you to many of you. First of all, uh, Jerry Martinek from CGSI. Jerry, I know you are awesome, but, and you just proved it. So thank you very much to you and all your family, because you were really helping a lot of people. Same Susan Collins, Mick Kurimski, Maria Iliondo, Beth Magura, Diana Palaj, who is organizing also the contribution and, and supporting the people. But uh, I, I, would, I will maybe thank you to all of you later in, in, at the end of the presentation. There are just too many people. But anyway, you are a really wonderful example of compassion, of, of you are the proof of empathy, of humanity. And uh, I think I'm, I'm uh, deeply convinced that not only your ancestors, but also your children and grandchildren will be proud of you because what you guys are doing, and this is true for all the people that are not indifferent and are just helping people uh, in need, that's really something wonderful. Well, being just 100 kilometers from Ukrainian border, uh, with many people here in Slovakia, we, we really were immediately uh, involved in this situation. And sometimes the pictures are worth more than 100 words. So I would like to show you a few pictures from the Košice train station a couple of days after invasion started. These, these are the pictures from my son who is studying photography in uh, Košice and he is commuting there every day. So he was right on the spot. So you can really see people in desperate situation that just lost everything. And uh, if you can imagine that uh, this could be your daughter, your granddaughter, your son, um, yeah, it's, it's very hard and uh, sometimes it doesn't matter if you are living in Kharkov or Cleveland, in uh, Dnepropetrovsk or, or, or Pittsburgh, we are just all the same and we all need help sometimes. And uh, this is something that I'm really glad that from position of the tour guy and genealogist, I, I had a chance to, to go and uh, help some of these people. This is uh, already the uh, border. Slovak Ukrainian border in Vishta Nemecke and Uzhorod, where the people were coming. And uh, this is where I came a couple of times to, with your support and with your help, I was able to pick up uh, some uh, women with their children that were like, for example, uh, this is uh, Katya, 15 years old, with her little brother Peter. They came from Kiev. And uh, th their mother is not on the picture, but they were accompanied by their mother. So after a after long journey, they, they came. And you can really see one luggage, one backpack. That's all what their life was reduced to. And this is all they, they had on their journey to unknown, leaving their father behind. So it was really hard. And I have to admit that 
it was hard to to see these people in that bad situation well this is the row of the refugees from the ukrainian side still and uh, i'm glad that many of these stories uh, so far are having at least half happy end because we were able to get these people to safety katya and peter went to after maybe two weeks in pressure where we were able to find them accommodation in the host family there are good people that offered them their house and then they went to great britain together that was another couple also they were originally from uh, from Krivoy rock living in kiev uh, julia 11 years old that's the age that my daughter has so they were coming from the town lviv and uh, usually this journey just took like some five six hours maybe they were traveling 10 hours the bus got broken it was complicated to get a new replace so it, they they came in the evening they came exhausted they came tired but also say same story thanks to you we were able to drive them to pressure find the the lady that uh give them accommodation and these people also left to left to britain another activity that uh, with your your support we were able to do uh this is the ukrainian center here in pressure it's a local hub for for people that are searching the supplies that are searching the clothes or or the drug the, i mean uh, some some hygiene stuff etc so we were able to support them or supply them with the food coupons for the families that uh, came with very little and uh, it was it was great feeling that we could could support uh, the community also in this this way uh here we are with another people in the center my mammy in pressure in the peacetime they are doing excellent job they are helping the uh, uh, women and children that are suffering from domestic violence but they did not hesitate and they welcomed eight families from uh, from ukraine and uh, the lady on the right with the red scarf uh her name is svetana she's a child psychologist from the town irpin you probably heard this uh, town before the name of this town unfortunately a couple of days they came to slovakia she she was very sad and she shared with us that uh, their home was destroyed by the uh, rocket missile and she has no place to go so we just uh, came and, and provided some some financial support to the families there uh, hopefully hopefully they will be able to to return back but right now their destiny is very uh, uncertain they have the safe place here in pressure but it's hard to say when they will be able to come back uh, happy faces at least again some very small things that we were able to to do uh, these ladies uh, olina she's from Kharkiv. I guess a good pronunciation with her son Valerie and uh, another lady. Uh, she's a microbiologist and and her son. So we we were able to get the computer for the, for the children and also for the ladies because they lost their jobs. And maybe with the with this help they will be able to get some online online uh, job and uh, also the children will be able to attend. Uh, online education because this is important to say suddenly we have uh, thousands of children that need to do something and it's better for them to get some education and uh, yeah sometimes sometimes it means a lot when you have somebody in the strange country uh, that can give you a hand and just support you at least a little bit even i have to say that my children gave the scooter so i, I i'm glad that they uh, helps the, the kids this way so hopefully we are doing their lives at least a little bit better a little bit more convenient and um, i have to say it's not a vacation for them even they are smiling here but most of the times they are not unfortunately the situation for them is definitely not not easy you they do not know anybody here they they are in the apartments often many of them or more of them uh, packed in, in one room, two rooms, and uh, also, in spite the Ukrainian language is similar to Slovak, 
when I was trying to have a fluent conversation, it was quite difficult. So every every little thing that we are doing and with your support, that's that's perfect. This is another family. Uh, they are from the town uh, Krivoy Rock. Uh, also, these are the group of the people that went to Britain later. They had some some friends there, and uh, we are already here in Košice Airport, where uh, this little girl Stephanie, she's like six years old. She was telling me how they are waking four times in the night and they are hearing the sirens, which which is just crazy. And this is still the more lucky part of the story. Unfortunately, not many people many people didn't have the chance to to escape the country so we we are really happy that at least some cases have kind of kind of a good good uh, ending this group of people uh andre and kirill are two two boys that we provided uh, computers we provided the the grocery the food some some little money for them so they have the easier time to not only have their like uh, basic needs covered but also with the computers they are able to study online in the Kiev University I I believe they are uh, kind of electro engineers or or something they just started their first year and uh, first it was COVID and now it's worse so very complicated situation but uh, we are trying to do as much as we can to to improve their situation a little bit uh, one more picture. Uh, these two ladies, uh, again, we are on the border, but this is already on their way back to Ukraine. Uh, this was a couple of weeks uh, before when the situation already got better around the Kiev area. They spent first some two or three weeks in uh, Tatry Mountains area where there is a cottage uh, where there were about 50 people. First, I brought them here uh, to Tatras, and now we are already on the way back. Uh, they spent a few days in Ushorod, and now I believe they are already back in Kiev. However, it's still quite risky. But uh, some people just have this will and courage, and uh, trust me, these Ukrainians are much stronger than most of us probably would be in that situation. And uh, many times, or maybe before the, the conflict, Many people from the Western or Central Europe would look on the Ukrainians like uh, with some uh, with some prejudices, little prejudices maybe. But now they prove that they are just excellent people and they can really manage the, the crisis situation incredibly. Uh, as I was speaking about the schools, uh, we were able to provide some support also to the to the Ukrainian school here in Preshov. This is the headmaster of the school, Mr. Andrejczak. And uh, in the first uh, weeks, the capacity of his school's school doubled. He had to, uh, or he welcomed actually about 60 children. I'm not sure what is the number right now, but uh, he immediately opened the new classrooms and, and welcomed these Ukrainian children. So some of them uh, that uh, are able to have also the, the place where to study. Of course, it is logistically and uh, um, logistic problem and problem with uh, getting the new books and, and supplies, and you just have to have to be very creative when dealing with the acceptance of these new students. But he is the man that actually can do it and uh, with the problems. But his school is a very nice example that we can help, and there is a space if we really want to. Uh, last but not least, this is the, on the right, Mr. Kazanevsky. He is the well-known uh, cartoonist. Uh, he's, uh, you can try to Google him. He's uh, well-known, uh, originally from Kiev. He's about 72 years old, so he could come to Preshow already with his wife. Uh, most of the men that are below 60 actually have to stay in Ukraine and help to defend the country. Uh, he's here with my father, who has the brain sneezing cartoon gallery here in Preshow, and we were able to uh, find him accommodation and uh, he's able to to create his uh, work, his uh, art here in relatively good conditions and uh, support the anti-war movement with his, uh, with his paintings. Uh, below is the link to uh, 
to Washington Post where there was the oops where there was the sorry where there was the article about the, this man and so uh, you can find here people of every from every class every profession there are just thousands of people that that really need help unfortunately it doesn't look like that uh, the war will end really soon but still i would like to say big thank you to all of you that are in this wonderful community and are helping ukrainian people again just just some of the names please forgive me if i forgot to somebody uh there are so many people that are helping uh in, in any matter and this is really wonderful so thank you very much for that and uh if you think that you would like to uh, do something more or maybe support some organization no matter where these people are if it's american or ukrainian or, or here in Presho, i can at least give you give you some tips uh, in Presho, there is a wonderful there are wonderful people from podai jale Presho. they are every week organizing the convoy with the supplies to ukrainian towns this guy behind him with the big smile is today having 40 years victor and uh, and he's the one that is uh, helping a lot to the, to uh, as well as uh, as the lady lady here vicky so if you if you are interested you can find them on uh, the facebook link uh, above and you can get in touch with them even very recently they had a guy from america that was that, that is here in pressure that was helping them uh and here here you can see the the result of, of their work so they are really bringing the supplies to the people uh in need and that they are hiding in their cellars another organization is uh, that i already mentioned uh my mammy or me mommy that's the that's the safe house and you can find them at mymammy.sk uh you can contact them they speak english and they will definitely welcome any any support and uh, last but uh, definitely not the least is uh, my friend Andri Dorosh. He is Ukrainian tour guide, genealogist. He is the same age as I am. I, I met him a couple of times. He is a wonderful person. He is living in the town Volodymyr, which is on the Ukrainian Polish border. And, uh, and uh, I, I will never forget the morning when the war started. And he called me like, Michal. I, I will need 50 uh, helmets and 50 bulletproof uh, vests because he was helping to organize the, the unit that was sent to front. Now he is uh, offering his house to, to refugees. He is supplying the people in need that are further inland. So he is also the person that if you would like to support somehow people in Ukraine, you can do it uh, through him. Well. Uh, I realized that this was not so much genealogical topic. Uh, this was more about the present things. But uh, I believe that as soon as that these tragic events uh, will be over, we can all come back again to the things that we love to do more, and uh, we can discuss genealogy and our uh, heritage and, and ancestors. And of course, you are all welcome to come here to Slovakia. But right now we need to deal with the things that are a little bit more urgent, unfortunately. And if if we can, we can all help together because this is where our strength and, and power is. So thank you very much again for attending the webinar. And uh, maybe before I will say goodbye, the topic or, or one of the headlines of, of our presentation was connecting the families. We are not there yet. There are still women and children that are being separated from their fathers and from their husbands. They are still waiting to the day when it, uh, this war will be over. And, uh, and I hope that I will have soon the stories of reuniting and rejoining. So let's do we will be able to achieve all together very soon and the evil will be defeated. All the best to you. Thank you.